sister had a breakdown and confessed she slept with my fiancé three years ago to get back at her ex. My mom knew about it for months and never told me. Hi, Reddit. I'm posting here in the hope that someone can give me some advice, share their experiences. I don't know, I'm just completely at a loss. I feel like my heart has been ripped out. My fiancé, let's call him Jake, and I have been together for seven years. I don't know a life without him. I met him at university. We stayed together past graduation and moved into a flat, which we bought together two years ago. He proposed last summer, and we were set to wed in July 2017. We have had very few problems. Until now. My sister, let's call her Sarah, is an extremely volatile person growing up. I doubted on her completely, but she had a lot of personal issues that made our home life turbulent. Her childhood was very different to mine. My parents had very little money. They were on the brink of a divorce. My dad was physically violent on a number of occasions, whilst things improved drastically. In the years after I was born, she has an abundance of problems that stem back to this. My parents feel a lot of guilt about Sarah's upbringing and used to let her get away with some shocking behavior. Sarah had the same boyfriend for as long as I can remember. They dated from when they were 16, and their relationship was toxic. They habitually broke up and got back together when they were good. They were crazy in love. But more often than not, she would have these insane arguments sometimes physical with him, then take out her frustrations and despair on myself and my parents. I remember spending many nights lying by her side in bed while she cried so hard she would retch after their arguments. She would throw plates and glasses at the wall, hit herself. Sometimes she would hit me and my parents too. It was like he was a drug to her and she was emotionally stunted and didn't know how to see anything past their relationship two months ago. Her boyfriend called things off for good. I don't know what gave, but after nearly two decades together, he finally had enough. He booked a one-way ticket to another country, changed his number, deleted all social media profiles, and essentially disappeared from Sarah's life. To this day, she still won't explain what caused this but it was long overdue to say Sarah was devastated as an understatement. She moved out of their shared rented apartment and in with my parents, I would visit her most days after work where she would flit in between explosive rage to an almost catatonic silence, staring at the wall with tears streaming down her face. At one point we were all extremely worried she might seriously harm herself, unorganized for her to see a therapist, something I had suggested for years. Of course she backed out days before her appointment, and there were no consequences. She is, after all, a grown woman. She just hasn't changed emotionally in the entire time I've known her and still acts like a teenager. Two days ago, I went to visit Sarah, who was in bed in her darkened room. I let myself in and attempted to speak to her, telling her about my day at work. She immediately exploded, screaming at me, throwing her pillows across the room, crying uncontrollably. She told me life was unfair, that I had everything, and she was left alone to rot. That everything wrong in her life was because she was a bad person. She hurt her boyfriend. She drove him away. She's ruined our family. She fucked Jake and didn't even feel guilty at the time. I initially thought I'd misheard her, but then she said it again. It was like she had poured a bucket of ice water over me. I silently left shaking when I got home. Jake was there watching TV. It came out of my mouth the second I saw him, and I could see in his eyes it was true. He broke down and told me it had happened three years ago. Sarah had had another blazing row with her boyfriend and decided to drive round to Jake's looking for me. I was at our parents' at the time, and Jake attempted to pacify Sarah. He comforted her while she sobbed in his arms, and one thing LED to another they had sex. I packed an overnight bag while he followed me from room to room, sobbing and telling me it was the worst mistake of his life, that he still has no idea how it happened, that he felt unbelievably guilty the second it was over, that it feels like it wasn't even real. I left him in the doorway begging me not to leave. I've checked into a hotel and I've switched my phone off. I don't know what to do, who to tell, where to begin. I feel sick, like this is a bad dream. My heart feels like it's been ripped into a million pieces for all of Sarah's faults. I love her more than anything. It's the two people who are more to me than anyone else in the world. How the fuck do I move on from this? I feel like I'm in a bubble. I don't know what's going on in the outside world. 
All I do is cry and sleep in this room. Someone please help me make sense of this update. One, hi everyone, I'd like to thank each and every single person who took the time out of their day. For me, I was so overwhelmed that I've not responded to a single one as of yet. But it is truly, truly appreciated now. On to the update, it has only been a day or so since I made my post. But it feels like I've been in that hotel room for weeks, crying in the dark, buried under the covers. At some point this morning, I decided to draw the curtains open and let the sunlight in. I went and sat on the balcony and switched my phone on for the first time. It started ringing within 30 seconds. It was my mother who burst into tears as soon as I answered her, and my parents had obviously been desperately worried this is the longest I've ever gone without contact, and it even contemplated calling the police that I failed to contact them. By this evening, my mom informed me that as I was walking out of Sarah's room down the stairs and out the front door, Sarah was screaming and wailing that she's sorry. Funnily enough, I didn't hear this. I don't know how. I think I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't process anything around me. Honestly, I can't even remember the drive home after I shut the door behind me. My mom, who was the only other person at home, rushed into Sarah's room to find her trashing her room and attempting to slash her wrist with a blunt liner cutter of all instruments. Sarah used to do a lot of art, obviously this barely caused a scratch, but jump-started my mom into action. She drove Sarah to the hospital, where I understand she underwent some sort of assessment and was kept overnight. She has incredibly agreed to undergo treatment for whatever it is that is wrong with her. My mom was surprised. She was so complacent on the drive down, willingly entering the car and saying nothing other than asking where I am. Sarah seems resigned and completely deflated. My mom spoke to me at length for the first time in my life about the hardships they had undergone during Sarah's childhood. I am unwilling to go into detail, and am still in shock about some of the things I heard. Sarah is not devoid of responsibility. She has long surpassed the age where she can blame her childhood for her behavior, but my mom admitted through tears that not sending her to therapy at an early age was the biggest regret of her life so far. I asked my mom if she knew why I had left. She admitted that she had known since Sarah's ex left two months ago. At this point, I had to struggle not to hang up, and I suddenly felt myself going back into that pit, but she begged me to listen after her ex. Harry, I am too drained to invent a name. Hi, Harry left. Sarah told my mom exactly what had happened. It was not the reason for Harry's departure, although he did know about it, rather. He had had enough of being Sarah's carer and years of begging her to seek help. Had fallen on deaf ears one too many times when Sarah informed my mom. My mom told Sarah I have to know immediately. Sarah refused to tell me. And I still don't know why she changed her mind in that moment. My dad doesn't know for anyone wondering and thinks I've left, as I've also finally had enough of Sarah's behavior. Now here is where the home truths came out. I asked my mom if she knew the details. She was reluctant to tell me anything, stating that it had happened, and that was all I needed to know. But I told her I refused to step foot in the house until I knew everything. She then proceeded to tell me that a few months before they slept together, Sarah and Jake had kissed at my dad's 60th birthday party. It was a large family gathering with a lot of alcohol involved. I remember Jake getting very drunk with my cousins. Sarah had a crying tantrum prior to arriving as her, and Harry had an argument, and he refused to come. She called me sobbing before she arrived at some point during the night. Jake asked her if she was okay, and hugged her, and once again one thing LED to another, and they shared a kiss in the kitchen. Sarah told my mom that they were both immediately remorseful and vowed never to speak of it again, but Sarah deliberately sought him out the night they slept together, knowing he was unlikely to turn her down. She openly admitted she did it to get back at Harry, who had cheated on her during one of their many infamous breaks. I don't think I even entered her thoughts at this point. I'd heard enough. We'd spoken on the phone for over four hours, and I felt mentally drained and physically sick. Any hope I had of salvaging my relationship with Jake has completely gone. I feel the last three years have been tainted by their betrayal, and the many years before that. I wonder, did he like Sarah this whole time? Part of me doesn't even want to know. It's worth noting, he has made absolutely no attempt to contact me other than a single text, stating, I'm sorry, take as long as you need, 
as if it's inevitable. I will come back to him. Things are still up in the air. I don't feel ready to check out of the hotel, as I don't know where I'm going to go next. I feel my relationship with my mom has been rocked by these revelations. I don't know what's going to become of Sarah. I have no idea what I'm going to do about me and Jake's flat where I'm going to live. I don't even know if I have a job anymore. I just haven't showed up to work. But I know the truth, and the smallest part of me is grateful for that. The rest of me is consumed by a pain I never imagined possible. I guess there's nothing else to do now except wait and see how things unfold. But reading through your comments and messages have been more help than you can imagine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for anyone who has ever experienced symptoms like Sarah's, or has been around someone who is so visibly troubled, I beg of you, seek help before it's too late. Update 2. Hi everyone. I thought I would make a final update to my original post. An update as I received a lot of messages over the last few days, wondering how I'm over the holiday period. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for the outpouring of support I've received over the last month. The number of messages, links to help, and offers for a shoulder to cry on were overwhelming and touching. I apologize if I never got round to replying to them all. The last few weeks have been a blur, but I am eternally grateful nonetheless. So after my conversation with my mom where I found out she had known about Jake and Sarah, I went back to square one. I switched my phone off again and retreated back into my hotel for a further five days from the comments on my last post. I should clear up one thing my mom had known about Jake and Sarah from the very beginning. Rather, Sarah had told her about it at the time of Harry's sudden departure, meaning she had known a couple months before I did. Eventually, I decided enough was enough and decided to call work. My boss wasn't angry or even surprised to hear from me. My mom had called him after our conversation and told him there had been a family emergency and I would be unavailable for the foreseeable future. He advised I take to the end of the week, but would have to come to a meeting if I required any more time off work than I had already given myself. So my job was safe-ish and I'm back at work and trying to get on with things. After this, I went back to my parents. Sarah was also home, but holed up in her room, I went in to see her and she was up painting, as a number of you guessed. It is likely she has BPD. Although my parents are waiting on a second opinion, she is going to counseling weekly and seems slightly better. She broke down in tears when she saw me, and we had a long talk, where she spoke to me in depth about how truly consumed she was by her and Harry's toxic relationship. She understands it's for the best that it's over, but she describes the pain as unrelenting. It hurt when he was with me, and it hurts now he's gone. I know a lot of you will feel disappointed that I haven't cut her or my mom out of my life for good. I still feel resentment in the pit of my stomach when I think about it, but truly, I blame Jake more than anyone else. Jake was with me for long enough to see some of Sarah's behavior. She's not well, and he still chose to do what he did. It is a slow process, but she's my sister, and I can't cut them out of my life forever. It will never be the same again. But maybe that's a good thing my dad, who had been newly informed on the proceedings, drove to my apartment and gathered some clothes in an overnight bag. Jake was not home, and my parents have not heard from him since I left. I have no idea where he is, and neither he nor his family have attempted any contact with me since this came out. His social media profiles have disappeared, and I have not attempted any contact with him, his family, or his friends. I began the slow process of telling my friends last week I did not explain what happened, other than to say Jake was not the person I thought he was. They have all assumed cheating, but there is no reason for them to know who was involved. I have switched back and forth. Between staying with my parents and sleeping at my apartment, I sleep on the sofa bed as the memories are too painful at the moment. I am in the process of looking into selling the place. However, this means contacting Jake at some point in the near future as the apartment is joint-owned. I will cross that bridge when I feel a bit stronger. Christmas Day was a strange and sad one for both myself and Sarah, but we spent it as a family, and for the few hours we were sat around eating and watching movies. The pain was dulled even a small bit, as we were flicking through the various movies and TV episodes we'd recorded. I came across a scene that stuck with me, a scene that ended with the words, L.A. Familia S. Toto. I still spend most days with a hole in my heart. It hurts more than anything I've ever felt in my life, but it's getting better. I know I've got a long way to go, but for the first time I'm confident I'll get there. 
Thank you for reading next story. GF's best friend calls her babe FaceTimes, her at 2 a.m., and she wanted to cancel our anniversary trip for his concert, when I finally had enough. She suddenly changed and begged me. I 28M have been dating my girlfriend Sarah 26F for just over a year now, and while I love her, there's one thing that's been eating at me since the very beginning, her relationship with her male best friend, Jake. 27M Jake has been Sarah's ride or die since college, and I knew from the start that they were close, but what I didn't realize was how much it would impact our relationship. I've always tried to be the chill, trusting boyfriend. I don't want to be the guy who's threatened by a platonic friendship. But honestly, it's gotten to the point where I feel like I'm the third will in my own relationship. Jake and Sarah are practically inseparable. They hang out multiple times a week, dinners, movie nights, spontaneous late-night drives, and I'm usually not even invited if I try to join. It's awkward, like I'm crashing their private joke-filled world that I'm not a part of, it stings, but I tried to let it go for the sake of keeping the peace. But then things started to cross a line. Jake texts her constantly. Even when we're together on dates, it's not just casual stuff either. He calls her babe and sweetheart, and when I brought this up to Sarah, she laughed and said it was just their thing and that it didn't mean anything, apparently. They've been calling each other that for years, but to me it feels like there's more to it who calls their best friend babe when they're in a relationship. Then there was the night I stayed over at her place and woke up at 2 a.m. to find Sarah on FaceTime with Jake. She was giggling like a schoolgirl whispering so she wouldn't wake me when I asked her about it the next morning. She brushed it off, saying Jake needed someone to talk to. But what about me? Am I just here as background noise while she stays emotionally tethered to this guy? The final straw came last weekend. Sarah and I had been planning a special weekend getaway for our one-year anniversary, something we've been looking forward to for months. But out of nowhere, Jake invites her to a concert. The same weekend, Sarah asked me if we could postpone our anniversary trip. So she could go with Jake instead because it's a band they both absolutely love. I was floored our anniversary, something we've been planning for months, could just be rescheduled for Jake. It was like, I didn't even matter. I told her that this was too much and asked her to set some clear boundaries with Jake, like no more pet names, no more hanging out one-on-one -on -one all the time, and definitely no more prioritizing him over our relationship. She blew up at me, calling me controlling and insecure. She even said, you knew Jake was part of my life when we started dating. Why are you trying to change me now? Things got worse when Jake apparently told her that I was being toxic and trying to manipulate her. Sarah is siding with him saying I'm overreacting and that nothing has ever happened between them. She's now furious with me for giving her an ultimatum. When all I really asked for were some boundaries that would make me feel like I'm her boyfriend, not just a side character in her life with Jake. Now Sarah is giving me the silent treatment and I'm starting to feel like I've somehow become the villain in my own relationship. Am I losing my mind here? I'm not asking her to drop Jake completely, just to prioritize us and respect our relationship, but maybe I've been unreasonable. So Reddit either for asking my girlfriend to set boundaries with her male best friend, or is this friendship way too close for comfort? Update October 6th, 2024. Hey Reddit, I'm back with an update, and let me just say, it didn't turn out how I expected at all. I first want to thank you all for the amazing support you all have given me after reading over the comments and talking to some of you guys. I had made up my mind, I was done being second place in my own relationship, and I was ready to walk away. But what happened next surprised me. Saturday night, Sarah came over to talk. I was prepared to have the breakup conversation, but before I could get a word in, she told me something unexpected. She had cancelled the concert plans with Jake. She said that, after our last conversation, she realized how serious I was, and it made her think about everything she told me. She had been selfish, that she had been taking our relationship for granted. She said she told Jake she couldn't go to the concert, and instead she wanted to spend the weekend with me. No distractions. No third wheels, just us. I was honestly shocked. Part of me didn't believe it for months. I had been asking her to set boundaries with Jake, and suddenly... She was doing it. It felt surreal, like a last-minute effort to save something that was already broken. But she seemed sincere. She apologized not just for the concert situation, but for all the time she had ignored my feelings, dismissed my concerns, and prioritized Jake over us. She admitted she had been blind to how much it hurt me, and said she didn't want to lose me. It was emotional. 
She was crying, and I could see how much it scared her that I was about to walk away. For the first time in a long time, it felt like she was choosing me. But here's the thing. As much as I appreciated her apology, it didn't magically fix everything I told her. That while canceling the concert was a good step, it didn't erase all the hurt. I still felt like I had been competing with Jake for too long, and trust once broken is hard to rebuild. We ended up spending the weekend together as planned. We didn't go on the big anniversary trip, but we stayed in, cooked together, and had long conversations about everything, our relationship. Jake, the future. It was a roller coaster of emotions. There were moments where I felt like maybe we could make this work, but also moments where the damage felt too deep to repair. By today, I was emotionally drained. Sarah seemed to think things were heading in the right direction, but I still wasn't sure I needed space to think, so I told her we should take a break, give each other some time to reflect and see if this relationship was something we both wanted to fight for. She didn't take it well. She cried again, begged me not to go, said she'd prove to me that she was serious about changing, but I needed to be alone to clear my head without the constant push and pull of emotions. So I left. I haven't spoken to her since we agreed to give it a couple of weeks. Before we decide anything. But to be honest, I'm still leaning toward ending things for good. Could she really have set boundaries with Jake after everything I find this hard to believe? After months of me begging, I feel like I've already checked out of the relationship. And while her efforts are appreciated, I can't shake the feeling that it's too little too late. I'll always care about Sarah. But this whole situation has made me realize how important it is to be with someone who values and respects you from the beginning. Someone who doesn't make you feel like you have to compete for their attention. You all think she might have cheated on me with Jake. So Reddit I ask, should I give her another chance or should I go through with a breakup?